Welcome to episode 25 of season 4 of the Gateway Geeks podcast. This time we talk about The Lighthouse and the lovely Sony animation Mitchells vs. the Machines. I'm sure that those are in some way related, but I will leave it to you, dear listeners, to figure out how. Now on to your Gateway Geeks crew, Sarah, Chris, Joe, Wendy, and Aaron. Welcome to episode 25 of season four of the Gateway Geeks podcast. Uh, this time we're watching The Lighthouse and The Mitchells versus The Machines. Um, Naturally, just flow. <laughs> they they go so well together. Yeah. Together at last. Yeah. And as, as such, our game, uh, in, you know, because we watched The Lighthouse, is uh, our name and then a drink, we w- what we would drink, we ran out of booze and presumably a lighthouse, I guess anywhere else with chemicals. It was somehow isolated. So, um, man, someone else is gonna have to go first. There's so many choices. Who's going All first? All right, I'll go. I'll go first. Uh, I'm Aaron, and I guess that after I ran out of booze, um, diet Dr. Pe- or, uh, Dr. Pepper Zero. Uh, <laughs> my go-to. Basically the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris, and I'll go with a hearty combination of seawater and gull blood. Keep that protein up. <laughs> um, my name is Wendy, and given as I have actually a little more knowledge than I really ought to have about how lighthouses actually worked, uh, I'd make moonshine out of the kitchen garden. Mm. Mm, smart. There you go. Hi, I'm Sarah Jane Connor. Uh, I would go classic vanilla extract. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Nice, mm-hmm. Sarah. You're the only one who's truly following the spirit of this game. I, I know. My like, Aaron, 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 Aaron was surprised. No rule learn, follower. Aaron was surprised to learn that people actually drank perfume yeah. during oh, prohibition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think I would just be one of those people who went with straight kerosene. Um, but did they did they drink did they drink carrot? I thought they were drinking yes. kerosene. No, I think it was turpentine. no, that was the oil can. Yeah, that was yeah, the oil for like they were like, drinking kerosene mixed with honey. Yeah, because turpentine. Because turpentine was, turpentine. No, it was, turpentine it was the kerosene the... that they were using to fuel the lighthouse. Because <laughs> well, turpentine it was, coming and... out of the, it was coming out of the thing that he threw at him in the beginning, and he's like, yeah, "Carry yeah. that up instead of the keg, ya boy." Well, yeah, except that that lantern is done by oil, not kerosene, at that point. Uh, so he and he talked about oil. So it, if it, it, oh. it's the can, kerosene was used to clean as, as a cleaning fluid, uh, and so was turpentine because those lights make a lot of soot. Look, oh, one way or another, some version of gasoline mixed yeah. with honey that they're downing for effect. <laughs> yeah, I, the moral of this movie is don't drink turpentine. Yeah, and definitely don't <laughs> definitely don't drink with with Willem Dafoe ever. As I think we wrong. I will drink with Willem Dafoe any day. Yes. When your employee tells you he might have a drinking problem and he doesn't want to drink, don't force him to. <laughs> Automatically, don't. I will never trust a Canadian who says they don't drink. <laughs> yes. I don't think he was Canadian. He seemed to really hate Canadians. Well, it was so hard to tell when he kept dropping his accent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think he definitely he definitely murdered a Canadian and took his name, yeah, right? Yeah. You know and his accent. Okay. Yeah. And his yeah, accent, he took his name right. and his accent. Look, All right, we're already, we're, go ahead. We're we're already we're already talking about the movie, so let's just let's get it, let's just officially go there. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't leave anyone in suspense. So we watched the Lighthouse, the 2019 black and white film with Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson, and. Uh, I don't know who played the I don't know who played the mermaid, but there was at least one other person in that movie. Yeah. I think that's all. The- no, there was there was somebody who played the guy the 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 murder, murder victim the, yeah. the murder the guy. murder victim. That's right. Yes, very. That true. was the extent of the cast. <laughs> Chris, why don't you tell us the story of this movie? Since and you're Chris, the one who what? made us watch it. <laughs> yes, and Chris, why don't, why don't you answer also for your tell crimes? Us- Yes, Chris, tell us why you made us watch this because my takeaway was, wow, this tells us a lot about Chris. <laughs> so, the mermaid was played, okay. One, the mermaid was played by someone called Valerina Carmine. I think she's a, my, probably a model. Um, Maybe she's a professional mermaid. That is a thing. That is a job you can have. Yeah. Yes, yep. that is a thing. 
Okay. <laughs> That's not just an insane thing that I said. That is a job. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no and, and it's proof that we don't live in the darkest possible timeline because that's yeah. actually pretty incredible. <laughs> okay, so let me, a little bit of table setting. I saw this movie for the first time alone in a dark office high at one o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was the funniest goddamn thing I'd ever watched in my entire life. <laughs> Um, I maintain that this is unintentionally like a perfect dark comedy. It it is off its ass immediately. Um, it it's it's structured uh, just just like an odd couple two hander comedy where they just happen to like kill each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- th- this is just straight up like, hey. What if you had the boss from hell and also you were crazy? Um, and neither of you can leave. Yeah. I, basically, yeah. I mean, it's a straightforward story about uh, just uh, two dudes hanging out in a, in a giant penis mm-hmm. <laughs> who uh, drink and dance together and um, like nearly kiss several times. And then they fight every time they feel like they become too close. Because they are literally trapped within uh, a symbol of masculinity. Mm-hmm. Um, then, uh, of course, that's all wrapped up with just a shit ton of superstition. Because, again, they are trapped within masculinity. And, um, shit, how did I describe it earlier? It's a, uh, it's a Jungian farce with a, uh, a uh, Freudian sense of humor. Um, yeah. Humor, it is all dick and fart jokes. It is just wall-to-wall dick and fart jokes there's a cut scene from this movie we were robbed there's the original (laughs) cut of this movie cut directly from a sideways shot of the lighthouse to robert pattinson's erect penis that he was masturbating (laughs) just in case uh, you didn't get it that was maybe too on the nose i understand why they cut it (laughs) no because it's a comedy that's my point (laughs) Like, that's exactly the scene we needed for this movie about a dude who's just cranking it to, like, a, a whale tooth sculpture of a mermaid. Yep. Um, at what <laughs> he point... found in his mattress for yeah. some reason. Yeah. I mean, you know, why not? Okay, one, like, it's a lighthouse bunk. Like, if you look under the mattress, there's probably, like, the world's first Playboy. That like, was Aaron's <laughs> comment. Also, was this yeah. is the you know this is the clo- this is 18th century porn under yeah. the mattress. Yeah. Yeah. My my thought when he was reaching in that hole is like, oh, he's gonna find cum. Oh, he's definitely gonna. Oh find god. Cum. <laughs> I mean, the I rest just of this movie is littered with cum. Like, it, it, yeah. yes. I uh, I I did like the visual aesthetic of the movie. They did a beautiful job of it. They uh, they worked their asses off. They did a lot. So many transitions between like you would go be t- through a s- up visually up through a ceiling and then come up in a different room or a different location. Um, I really liked that. Um, we, we learned some interesting things today because it turns out a friend of mine lives in Newfoundland near where this thing was filmed. And they built mm-hmm. a lighthouse at, for the exteriors because the lighthouse that is actually there was is a concrete lighthouse that was made in the 60s and apparently is locally nicknamed the apple core because it's wider at the top and bottom and and is painted red and is apparently insufficiently dick-like uh, <laughs> so they couldn't mm-hmm. use that one they had to build another fake lighthouse mm-hmm. uh, and it's so, and, all and, the better for it and i shared pictures <laughs> on the chat of here's what they were building it here it says they were shooting it because they also had to light the living crap out of it because they decided to use what antique cameras and mm-hmm. some kind antique of antique lenses, antique film stock. Like, yeah, no. Um, okay, so ah, uh, like Sarah knows. Um, I have an obsession with uh second movies and second albums. Oh, yeah, because your second attempt is when you are all the fuck in your own head. If you can't tell, this is Robert Eggers' second movie. <laughs> like this is a guy going like okay no one's gonna tell me no here we go and uh yeah no this is like such a uh, sophomore home run as far as i'm concerned this is when you just have all of your weird impulses and you just go with it and um i don't know 
I, I love it. Look, it's it's weird. It's different. Uh, you don't see a whole lot of movies like it. Honest to God, what it reminded me of is like an R-rated version. It's it's like someone did an R-rated remake of an episode of uh, of um, 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 Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah, the show. Yeah. Like, which I always loved that show, and um, I don't know. This is just right up my alley. Like, see, I'm I'm cursed because again, I'm cursed by a great burden of knowledge. Uh, I think I was three minutes in when I looked at Aaron and said. When can I start pointing about pointing out what they got wrong about how lighthouse staffing works? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> generally, yeah. lighthouses right. were run. Yeah, generally, lighthouses were run by families, and also or larger crews because they were also responsible for sea rescue. Like if your ship hit the rocks, you needed a bunch of guys in the boat to come and get you. So there was usually there were occasionally smaller, really remote lighthouses like this. Um, and this, this one, I think they said it was like four weeks between tours. Generally, it was closer to six months if you were out remote, but very few stations were set up like this. Uh, and the other was when they first showed up with the boxes, I'm like, you don't send a tender out there. Uh, a tender is the boat that serves the lighthouses. You don't send a tender out there with two, do- with two dudes and their boxes. You send out the shit ton of supplies because generally you're leaving them in there for six months. Right, but so, they got mermaid vaginas dead on. Like they right. really well, did. So yeah, I mean yeah. that that bothered me because and I and I have a feeling that they 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 started having them run by families and larger dudes just so that this kind of bullshit wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, so yes, they were known to yes, they were known to be drunks, but also fun fun fact about that big light that they had up there. Um those are Fresnel lenses. The previous ones they used reflectors. Fresnel lenses was the big technological thing. So you get one lamp and all these lenses. But to get it to rotate, you had to, they had, a, they had it called what a zero friction bearing, which actually it's a ring of liquid mercury that that thing is floating on. Oh, so oh you know, I should have drank that. So you're not just drinking <laughs> turpentine, you're <laughs> sucking mercury fumes up there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, well, so yeah, was, there, there was a bit of a reputation that, for lighthouse keepers to go round the bend. Yeah, yeah but that, that lamp was sense. also powered by St. Elmo's fire. I mean, it's not a traditional lantern, as we've discovered. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, I, God. I, I thought wait, he stuck wait, wait. his hand in the flame or something. Oh, I was, I was, I, so he was definitely that? just went so, nuts and burned himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is here's here's my question. What did you all think when he opened that? I thought there was gonna be like a shot of what was in it. Yeah. Like I thought it was gonna be like oh, a tiny no. naked mermaid or something. I thought it was gonna no, be no, no. like some no, kind of weird he, revelation. No, I, I had pretty much figured out at this point that nine tenths of what was going on was in his fucked up brain, except yeah. for the part where they were actually hitting each other with axes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's right. also just one of those movies that has no interest in giving you answers. It's whatever yeah. the hell yeah. you decided it was. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you want it to be, you know, Cthulhu, if you want it to be him losing his mind, <laughs> if you wanted the, uh, the, the, the theory that I had halfway through while um, uh, inebriated at two o'clock in the morning was that clearly um, um, it was just his character from Aquaman who went through a midlife crisis in the late 1800s and started fucking with lighthouse keepers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the so thing with said- the thing with the birds is actual folklore. Um, a lot of well, the, the, a lot of the cartoon sea captain shit was based in Melville, but there was a, a thread of, yeah, no, that actually is a thing. Yeah, no, that, that actually is a thing. Yeah, that's what you do when you get scurvy and there's no real food as you go and you eat grass because it's got vitamin C in it. and Otherwise, your teeth are all going to fall out. Um, so, so there was an, there was enough actual truth going on there. But I mean, Defoe is playing such a caricature that, A, I couldn't hear what he was saying most of the time because he was mumbling oh, I, had the, I had the subtitles on the whole time like we're both speaking green goblin language yeah I was I, yeah I, aaron and i were like you know it might have worked better as a silent movie yeah with, 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 with like dialogue <laughs> yeah. cards because um, honestly yeah. understanding them didn't help at all our, my yeah. main problem with this is that Yes, it's gorgeous. It's really interesting. It's but it remained largely an academic exercise for me because I really couldn't give two shits about either of these people. 
I just, I, just I had absolutely that... no connection with them, and I did not care whether they lived or died. I didn't I care that it was you. real. I don't, I don't think you're supposed to. No. <laughs> Yeah. I wait, love wait, wait, living wait. in a world where we still ha- we still live in a world where there's some people that can get several million dollars to do a script that is much better suited for community theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, you could do this as a one set play with two guys. It would be like mm-hmm. two and a half acts. <laughs> but well, you wouldn't get it... you wouldn't get to see that lovingly rendered meal every night. By the which, by the way, I had to look up because I was like, I'm pretty sure they fed them better than that. Again, mostly to keep them from going fucking loony and stabbing each other. Yeah. They actually gave them decent food. Um, but the stylist put that together. It's mostly puree. The comment I saw was, if you thought it looked gross and black and white, you should have seen it in color. Uh, um because it not only looked horrible it smelled horrible i knew you liked me lobster though oh tell me you liked me lobster speaking of seeing it speaking speaking of seeing it in color uh one thing i discovered um about this movie is uh to because you know filming something in black and white you know you to get the right contrast you frequently have to do what they did say in the adams family television series which is you know have bright uh bright pastel colors so robert pattinson is basically dressed like mario from super mario brothers <laughs> incredible bright, bright i love sweater, it you know bl- uh, you know bright blue overalls big red hat uh, yeah because um, you're because you're you looking the right at kind of oh, contrast yeah yeah it's yeah, yeah it's t- so i was thinking about what books who did you say the director was chris david dave edgars uh robert eggers robert eggers robert eggers so i was thinking of the books that this guy had on his shelf uh like when he was writing this and uh so it's kind of like what wendy was saying about it the the bird thing being folklore i just thought of the rhyme of the ancient mariner the whole time because that was uh, such a big deal a good friend of mine is the official shantyman on the uh, the Dennis Sullivan, which is the official tall ship of Milwaukee. Uh, and he's got a song called Fisherman's Beach, which talks about the different types of gulls and whether they were sailing, yeah. whether they were steam, steam men or blue water sailors or white water sailors, or, you know, all of that. Right. So again, back to I sang sea shanties before TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, like- the birds were a metaphor for feelings. <laughs> so the that's why he was like is a metaphor for cocaine <laughs> oh my god i did that's really the... like the lighting uh, they like, we were discussing this just before you came on joe uh, with the lighting i mean i'm not a huge fan of pattinson's uh, pattinson's acting um i i think he's adequate but not Ooh. supreme <laughs> but he does what he does have is an extremely sculptural face and what they were able to do with his eyes and his cheekbones lighting wise, um, combined with lighting Willem Dafoe like a mountain, um, mm-hmm. that was actually really cool. And I really liked a lot of that, especially at the end when he's leaning into the lamp and his face is covered in soot, but you're still getting the shine on his cheekbones because of the oil. Yeah. Yeah. But I, two the, the, of the greatest living actors yep. chewing on a like a non-existent script and literally masturbating look i don't know what you guys are looking for in cinema (laughs) but like honestly give me more shit like this no i i think this is a legitimately good movie like i i I did i thought it was interesting but again i found it interesting from an academic standpoint more of like a it was interesting to look at not that i found it emotionally affecting in any way I also what? wondered why they didn't eat the beans that were in the cans. There were cans <laughs> of beans on the wall when they were like, clearly all Defoe starving. was eating the beans. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think he was smoking the beans. Yeah. When his pipe was upright, yes. Yeah. yeah it was, it was that upside was... down a good deal of the movie. Yeah, well, it's yeah. it was they when they ran out of they ran out of booze and they ran out of tobacco and ran out of sanity and and <laughs> and script writing and i i i i enjoyed it as you know as just you know visually but not story wise uh, wise what uh, what it made me think of is i really want to reread 
uh, Mira Grant's uh, Murder Mermaids uh, duology, um, <laughs> uh, which, which if you haven't read it, it's so good. I could have stood more mermaids. Yeah. But like, murder, that's how I feel mermaids, about Mermaids, murder, mermaids. <laughs> You mean like, you guys didn't I, uh, identify with all the dick metaphors? That's, <laughs> that's I, 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 I did love it in this in this phallic heavy movie. He sees one vagina and literally runs. Like, oh my yeah. god, it's 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 it's, it's Freudian. <laughs> See, the, there was definitely an element of horror to this that was, um, like you were saying, Chris, kind of like Hitchcock. Uh, because yeah. you know, if if it was a pure comedy, they would not have felt the need to show the mermaid vagina. They would not have felt the need to show Willem Dafoe all the tentacles and yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, yeah. We we were meant no, to be I'm playing the. Is it this was made real? as a comedy? I'm yeah. saying it's a beautiful comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, transcends genre. Yeah, you're playing. Look, yeah. yeah, you're playing. This is not the... just. This is not just death of the author. This is death of the genre. This is. <laughs> you don't get to say what it is anymore. I'm yeah. telling them it's a beautiful comedy. Uh, I mean, they played yes. a really good game of, okay, this, I'm thinking this part actually isn't real anymore. Yeah. <laughs> mm. they, do, they do a good job of making that transition um, kind of throughout the whole, it's kind of like a, an arc instead of just like an immediate transition. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just I mean, if you want to see that done actually better, it's um, shit. What's the one with, um, um, God damn it. Why am I terrible with actor names? Um, American Psycho. What's his name? Oh, uh, um, God damn it. Batman. Fuck. Um, Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Christian Bale. <laughs> Christian Bale. Thank you. Christian Bale oh slowly God. becoming convinced that there's a, a ghost in the machine that he's working on. Yeah. All right. What was that one called? Uh, the Machinist. Machinist? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 no. I, I, have, I have another one in terms of the oh my gosh, he's been crazy this whole time. Uh, Nick, Nicholas's, Nicholas Cage, most brilliant performance uh, ever is in Vampire's Kiss. Um, he, plays a, he plays a businessman who convinces him, basically goes nuts and believes that he is turning into a vampire. Um, and it's, it's, it's the one where he infamously um, ad-libbed eating a cockroach. A live mm. cockroach, um, uh, because you know he's going crazy. It's, um, yeah. Yes. No. I I just as one final nerd note, I will have to point out that I just about wet myself when Willem Dafoe actually uttered the words "sparkle like a sperm whale's penis." No. Yep. <laughs> because sp uh, sperm whale penises are not sparkly; they're pink. Yeah. And prehensile. Well, I, I too have seen blackfish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. That will so, never yeah. leave my mind. Yeah. I mean, as as someone who's been forced to read for some reason a great many like classic tales on fucking nautical life, I did appreciate like <laughs> like the Coleridge How did this and the, the, the Moby Dick. I don't know. Were, I've read Moby Dick. Were you all I had to held read at knife foot? No, no, it's just that like English teachers in their mid 50s really loved making people read Moby Dick. And then <laughs> was this an Eastern like, thing? No, no, it was a, a good uh, it was friend of mine who's a librarian. It's her favorite book. And she tries to she tried to have like a book club for us to read it with. And I oh. tried and I got like four chapters in and well, we library that fucker. I love, so I, just, Moby, I love Moby Dick because it's written the way I think. It's just all digression. The entire <laughs> well, thing is just the, constantly getting derailed. The thing about it's Moby ADHD, Dick is, the novel. Mm -hmm. The thing about Moby Dick is that it is objectively boring. Like you have to have <laughs> it is. You have to have you have to have a group of people suffering with you. And that in itself <laughs> is a metaphor for you know. But like <laughs> But Moby Dick has has an entire chapter on cetology, which is fine. It's study of whales. Okay, I get it. It has like three or four chapters just talking about like parts of the ship. And so by the time it's it, all that, digressions, yes. Yeah. But but no, those exist purely. So in later chapters, when Captain Ahab is losing his shit and he's yelling at Queequeg or whoever, he, and using nautical terms, you know what they are. And for some reason, Herman Melville didn't want to use footnotes in that part. I don't know. Yeah, no, it, but, it, it, it's like if you recut uh, 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 you know, all of the Lord of the Rings novels with chapters from the Cimmerillion, 
Just so uh <laughs> it is. Yeah. By the way, here's what you need to know for this next chapter. Yeah. <laughs> or, or 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 it's that Herman Belleville had to like learn all of this shit. And then he was like, God damn it, I'm going to use this useless fucking, I'm going to use my art history degree for something. And then he writes Moby Dick and he just forces it down to everyone's throat. I think my, uh, the, the, my band, uh, one of the, my guitarist wrote a song after having basically been reined in for a weekend with a sailor's dictionary. Uh, and as the song is about a, a young man who goes to sea and is so thrilled with all of his language and he's learned all the nautical terms and of course none of the extra, uh, actual sailors know what the goddamn hell he's talking about ah. quite a fun little song uh, that's where we learned that if your futtick is up your mizzen master ship is upside down did any of you all yes. um, it's not a good movie I'm not recommending it did any of you ever see Shutter Island no. no. Was that the one with Leonardo DiCaprio where he's like on a on an island with a mental hospital on it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the oh one yeah, I like, did see that. So the yeah. premise of that is that he's a duly appointed federal marshal <laughs> who gets uh, who gets sent to investigate uh, a murder inside of an insane asylum, and then you slowly come to realize that he's a patient at the insane asylum and everyone is playing along with his delusion of being a duly appointed federal marshal. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, so like, it's clever. It's not good, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, telling, a, telling a story w with a um, what's, the, what's the phrase? Um, um, untrustworthy narrator. That's not Unreliable true. narrator. Unreliable. Yeah. yeah. That, mm. that, that is a tricky thing to pull off well. Uh, I, I will say if you have never made your way, been able to make your way through Moby Dick, the book, the book is called The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Essex. And it is the actual, it is a novel, it is a uh, historical book written about the events that inspired Moby Dick. They were in the South Seas, they were whaling, a ship totaled their boat, and they've got two of the, the whale chasing boats. And one of them decides that they're gonna, they're afraid of, one of them decides to go to, the, to a nearer island. Uh, but the other one's like, no, we don't wanna go there. There are headhunters. We're gonna go to South America, which is 600 miles in the wrong direction. And I believe at a certain, I, I, I think at a certain point they start eating each other. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, that actually that wasn't right. illegal in the British Navy until something like, like the late nineteenth, late late twentieth century. It was <laughs> it, it, it was not you, actually illegal. You could legally was, eat people in the British Navy until it was like the assumed 80s. that there are times <laughs> when this kind of thing happens and you might have to eat your crew. So it literally was not outlawed until something like the nineteen fifties. <laughs> Look, the English Navy had a lot of interesting traditions. Like, well, yes. okay, look, the cabin boy was not actually there to clean the captain's cabin. Like, let's just make this. One I mean, oh, it, it, it was nice was, and clean. Though, just it was nice sense. and clean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? Uh... We'll not start singing dirty sea shanties. We'll not start <laughs> singing dirty sea shanties. What was it? The English Navy runs on uh, rum, rum, sodomy, and the, and the lash. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's a really good Pogues album as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, like, I, I don't know. Like, I know no one else liked this movie. I love this movie. It's I liked just, it. I, yeah, I yeah. know you did. <laughs> I enjoyed I enjoyed watching it. Would I watch it again? No, not really. Would I recommend it to people? It would depend. It, this this movie is for a very specific subset of people. Yeah, I will yeah. never watch yeah. it again sober. This was my one sober <laughs> experience with this movie. Yeah, no, Chris, I liked it. I mean, of course, you know, if you watch if if you watch art films, you can watch anything. Like if you're just forced to watch terrible student video art, yeah. Yeah, this yes. is this is still much better. So I was pleased. No, <laughs> I think the central can... metaf I think the central metaphor was very effective. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, on yeah. the number of talking on and on the theme of talking about terrible student movies. Da, 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 da. We have a segue. Yeah. There we go. Thank yeah. you, God. I was wondering where the fuck that was going to come from. I was like, <laughs> I was praying to beside me. jokes to our dog looks like a loaf of bread. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So Wendy and Aaron recommended Mitchell's versus the Machines, which was a delightful um, two-hour Sony Pixar-esque, except it was two hours. Um, 
Netflix, Netflix Studios. Well, it was originally made for theatrical release and it was going to be called Connected. Uh, but then COVID happened and they decided to sell it to Netflix and Netflix hated the other title. Uh, so it went back to Mitchell's versus the Machines, but it was already in production by that point. That is uh, a bad title. Connected, I'm just yeah. yeah. Out there. yeah. There's this, yeah, yeah it's yeah. kind of, it doesn't tell you anything. That's yeah, like that's... the sequel to Click or something. Yeah. Connected is a direct to the bargain bin at Best Buy for you know, a, a Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme movie. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yes, but that, because it was originally Mitchell's the Machines, they were going to change it and re- release it theatrically. And then Sony went, well, nobody's going to go to the movies for a while. Uh, hey, Netflix. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So it was, like I said, originally, it originally envisioned as a theatrical release. Uh, it's showing on Netflix. Uh, I wanted to watch it because several of the creatives that I follow on Twitter and several friends were like, you know, it was actually a lot better than I thought it would have been. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, that, that, that is enough to get me to watch it. And yes, it is more touching than it has any right to be in a movie that is that loudly animated. <laughs> it is, it is made by the, it is yeah. made by the team that some of the team that did Into the Spider-Verse. So it's that same type of uh, uh, aesthetic. And yeah, it's they, a Lord they, Miller joint. How did yeah. Sony become, and like working, uh, Lord Miller in particular, but Sony in general, become the only animation studio doing anything like fun and original with animation in the United States right now. (laughs) That's a weird thing, right? Yeah, that's very weird. Like Lord Miller, love those guys. Let them just keep doing whatever weird shit pops in their brain forever. Yeah. Yeah. So the quick summary of this movie is that uh, teenage weirdo daughter gets accepted to film school. Family doesn't understand her. Family doesn't understand each other. Blah, blah, blah. So they decide to fix this by rather by, by taking a cross country road trip to bond as a family. And in the midst of this, the machine apocalypse happens. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> Look, we've all and had those car trips. Yeah. 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 A, a friend of mine said that they just talk their kids into doing like a two week road trip without their screens. And I'm like, I think I have a movie you need to watch first. <laughs> yeah. Um it was it it was it was very very biting in some ways like yes you could totally get humans to go in the the capture trap escape pods by offering offering them free wifi. Yeah. Because humans are not particularly bright sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um it also reinforced my childhood belief that furbies are terrifying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, especially like at at one point okay. The gist of this movie is they have to, the, the, the uh, as, as Aaron puts it, uh, uh, an electronic yokai. Basically, yeah. the, guy, uh, the guy who invents the, who, in, who has invented not the iPhone yeah. uh, is mm-hmm. inventing not the personal assistant, which is not the walking robot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, voiced by voiced by Eric Andre, incidentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So he is, he, you know, basically tells the, his old AI that, you know, you're useless and you're behind the times. And the AI, AI takes umbrage at this and decides to get rid of the entire human race because yeah. they're a waste of time and they hurt their feelings. Uh-huh. So you've got like two different generations of robots and the family's halfway across the country and they discover by breaking a couple of the robots that there's a kill code that can be uploaded. So they are trying to upload this kill code and they go to the mall, What go, they go to not the mall of America. Right. Uh, to go to to go to not the Apple Store, uh, <laughs> to upload the key code, the, the kill code, and take down all the the robots. However, since this company controls all the free Wi-Fi, uh, the family ends up getting attacked by as I think it was Cory Doctorow who was referred to the Internet of Things that shouldn't be on the internet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all the the a all the internet enabled washers and dryers and such come out and try to kill them, yeah. and then they are attacked by a two story tall giant Furby. So yeah, they made the quick, they made the most inter- of their of their Furby license for sure. The yeah. Furby fi- is it just me or was the Furby fight like the most beautifully animated? Yes, fight it was. Scene in the, it like, was last wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, why is this this good? 
This whole Fighting movie was Barbie. like that. The whole movie was like this. This is way better than that. I, I, and I, I was led to believe by the trailers. I was yeah. dying like when we begin the dark harvest, and I just absolutely <laughs> lost. Yes, hearing those lines from a giant <laughs> Furby just confirmed all of my childhood fears. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, also, I mean, you know, the thing, the thing that's so amazing about this isn't just you know the, the um, average family versus uh, Terminators, but also just the, you know how easily and how quickly you become incredibly invested in each uh, each of the family members uh story um you've got yeah. uh you've got the, you know, the, the kid with the dinosaur uh, the, the uh, younger brother who is a dinosaur fiend right you've, you know, you've got the you know, you've got the uh, you've got the mom who's desperately trying to you know help, help her husband and her um and her older daughter uh connect on some level other than yeah, you know, we're just gonna dump you at uh, at school now. Um, got the yeah. father who followed his dreams and got his heart broken and is desperate to keep it from happening to anyone else to the point of basically trying to stuff his daughter in a cardboard box. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. and all of that, uh, you know, the mom cracked me up because it's at one point she starts kicking ass and she's like, "I'm a I'm a second grade teacher." You have no, you can't scare me, yeah. which was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think but yeah, it, it, it becomes absolutely ridiculous, and it's wonderful. And all of the little family stuff is clearly the, being the, clearly the daughter telling the story. So they have what they call Katie Vision, which is the weird little two D animation where like little rainbows pop out, you know, when somebody says something, which is kind of her. She she makes weird little movies. That's uh -huh. like her thing, and that's how she gets into film school. Uh, and her father's like, I don't get your weird little movies. And then there's a wonderful scene where he is trapped in the alien, in, in the robot pod next to the guy who invented the, next, next to Black, not Steve Jobs. Um, and Black, Black, not Steve Jobs is watching one of his daughter's movies. And he's uh -huh. like, these are actually really funny. And the father's like, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we are all saved by the fact that dad is a dork and carries a Thompson screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every, every member of the, um, of the family has, is, manages to help save the day based, based on their own particular weirdness. Dad saves the day because he is the dad who, who of course has a screwdriver in his back pocket every uh, all the time uh mom saves the day because you know you're gonna hurt my kids okay i'm going to go i'm going to go hulk on you uh and you know the little kid uh, how did the look i mean i know the, the kid, little kid was acting as as she was driving the car they they have strapped the family dog to the front of the car because they've discovered that their incredibly unattractive pug dog um they the robot's visual circuits cannot distinguish whether it is a pig, a dog, or a loaf of bread, and it short circuits them. Yeah. <laughs> so they are driving in to the, the big complex with the dog strapped to the front of the car, and the little boy is on a radio calling down strike directions to the daughter who's driving the car. Yeah. Pterodactyl vision! Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's his little dinosaur thing. Is he's, he's like, I got this, and he's up on a roof yeah. with a pair of binoculars calling the shots. Yeah. I, I have a point with the structure with what Aaron said in the beginning that you latch on to the characters very quickly. And I want to be careful with how I say this because I don't want to give license to bad filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And not to keep rolling this back to you, but um, they're archetypes. Yeah. Yeah. The reason yeah. you latch onto them very quickly is they are all archetypes. Archetypes are what we call stereotypes when they're done well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they're and we call comic book characters when they are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so when handled well and when you respect the characters within the archetype, when you are not exploiting expectations, but just working with easily recognizable archetypes, that's fine. Yeah. That's a great shorthand for introducing several characters very quickly in a way that you don't have to have a two-hour movie to introduce each of the characters leading up to all the characters meeting and having an adventure. Yeah. What are you referring yeah. to, Chris? What is that about? That 
<laughs> that's not the whole Marvel universe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I um I have to say that I really appreciate speaking of that, that there, there's the um I don't know, the 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 cliche about the kid wanting to go to art school. Yeah. And um, then the, the, you know, the dad being like, oh, what are you going to do with that degree? And then, of course, because this is a film done by animators and artists, yeah. of course, the artist kid like prevails and proves yeah. that it was worth, that it was worth it. But that's yeah. a particular archetype that pretty much any creative person can understand, because at Speak some point someone is. Someone Speaking as you, a musician and an artist whose parents were unsupportive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I babysat right. for my voice teacher and cleaned her house. Yeah. And it comes from it comes from a place in many cases, not all cases, it comes from a place of love because yes, like Wendy and I are not making billions of dollars off of our our art <laughs> or music, but it does improve one's life, which is kind of the takeaway. It's like it makes yeah. your life makes your life richer. Yeah. And I had to declare it on my taxes for 20 years running, so I figured that's a success. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> I actually had self-employment tax the first time it hit, I was terrified because yeah, that's that's a thing you don't, they don't teach you about in theater school. <laughs> yeah, without I, getting into any kind of details, Joe and I knew someone growing up whose mom had a uh, crafting side business that she was making <laughs> five digit income off for decades and never reported anything on her taxes. And then um, the IRS showed up eventually. Yeah, no, Is that I was what happened? I didn't know that. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, I I, de I declared it properly and then got to my, you know, here's what you owe at the end of the year. And was like, uh, I oh. don't have $700 in a week. Mm. Um, yeah, that was that was that was my first year of self-employment performance income. And that was a, that was a hell of a thing. So kids, <laughs> if you do that, increase your if you have a day job, increase your withholding. Yeah, you know what I've learned actually just as a tip to any artist living in Missouri, if you ask people to pay you in installments of under six hundred dollars, uh you could just you you you're in much better shape. Like if someone uh, however, owes you fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. The, the issue, yeah. However, the issue with mine is that we legally my band is a sole proprietorship under my name. So I actually have to cut 1099s to prove oh. that I didn't keep all the money because the checks <laughs> right. minstrosity, yeah. Yeah, minstrosity does not have a bank account. I have a bank account. Yeah. Checks are written to me. Yeah. So yes, I have to cut 1099s. It's annoying. But this was just when I was still doing solo stuff, but I was working as a 1099 contractor. Yeah. And they don't tell you about that. So now I still 20 years later, do my taxes in January. Because if I got a big hit like that, I got time to put 20 bucks a week in a jar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, yes. they, they don't mention that little thing that, yeah, self-employment income, if you, don't, if you make enough, you actually are supposed to estimate it quarterly. I was always just shy of that. But yeah, yeah that's, a thing they, that's a thing that art school does not teach you. No. It's no, 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 no. They can't teach you the, you know, the, the, the useful nitty gritties of actually... There's, a, there's an organization in St. Louis called VLAA, which is Volunteer Lawyers and Accountants for the Arts. And if, uh, if you're a rich person and you want to help artists, you should give them some money because they've kept many artists out of, out of jail. <laughs> so, oh, Sarah's been kicked off. We have to shoot the shit for a second so she can at least right. get on. And see. If she's coming back. Yeah, she's trying. Yeah. No, but actually, I mean, I, I really enjoyed this movie and it's like you guys are saying it's it was way better than it had any right to be yeah um, we were actually I mean, like tearing up I pulled out the box of tissues we were actually tearing up at the big at the the big over the top family is important speech which yeah. should not in any way shape or form have been as emotionally affecting as it was yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah I'm like I'm like I can't believe that this is doing to me hand me a tissue <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh on the other hand it, it is widely known that i'm a mutant who cries at beer commercials yeah uh i cry oh. at weddings of people i don't even like <laughs> man no like one time i like lost it crying at a short mill a short film that turned out to be a long commercial yeah it was literally uh uh wes anderson made it i think it was an h&m commercial yeah. Oh, They're dude, fucking... same. I know exactly the one you're talking about. The train one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I fucking lost it when the kid walks in there with the Christmas tree. And, the... and then it's a commercial. Like, what? God damn yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's called, I think it's called Come Together. 
Let me find him. Look, I, yeah. I will I will always be that asshole who just loves all Wes Anderson projects more than Did you guys like Isle of Dogs? Yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. You didn't? It. Not yet. Joe. Oh, wow. yet. How did you not like Isle of Dogs? I feel like that one was made for oh, you. No, I did like Isle of Dogs. Okay. I was just I was surprised. That's the that most Joe Wes too. Anderson movie. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. It's got Tilda Swinton in it and Bill Look, Murray. In the in the same way that um, um, Moonrise Kingdom was made for me, <laughs> like Isle of Dogs was made for Joe. Like, there's absolutely oh, yeah. no question. Oh my god! There oh, go. speaking of, have, have you guys have you guys ever played Night in the Woods? Yeah, it's, I saw that not trailer. Yet. Not yet. Oh, it's so. Um, Sarah's coming back. So Night in the Woods is a. It's like a, basically like a point and click platform indie game about a group of people or about this this girl named may who is a cat person who comes back to her hometown in the rust belt and realizes how shitty it is and she's like 20 and um yeah that it, I've, I've been playing it and it's like one of the best games i've ever played in my life narratively <laughs> sarah has it's done a- what i did during my last board meeting which is she's given up and, and put it out on her phone <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear you muted muted. Uh, you are uh, muted I think, though I think and, it's, and it's about to drop yeah oh yeah. man I, I had to do that during my last virtual board meeting I, I, we were all set to prep our convention and the treasurer drops out three minutes into the meeting <laughs> uh, uh, okay uh, can you hear me uh, yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. yes I'm okay. here in front of my various clothes <laughs> So. <laughs> well, instead of the unsettling runic penises that you had on earlier, <laughs> you didn't like the penises. Come on! Oh, I, I just felt the need to ex- I just felt the need to explain this to the audience who may or may yes. not be watching this on video. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. we did this entire video with Sarah, with uh, Sarah having large runic inscribed monumental stone penises in the background. Sarah, yeah. those were definitely yeah. Japanese, weren't they? Oh Sorry, yeah. Okay. No, those are the, there's an erotic sculpture park on Jeju Island in South Korea. <laughs> in South Korea, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one way or another, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does one schedule that uh, vacation? Hey, kids, we're going to Penis <laughs> Island. <laughs> Jeju <laughs> Island is a traditional honeymoon destination. Oh, fertility. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Niagara Falls of the East, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's also what? like there's a there's like a little playground where you can drop off your children. Also, <laughs> it's just got like walls, ten foot walls all the way around yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a your seesaw? <laughs> no, no. No. <laughs> uh, no. Oh yeah. So no, basically, no. what we we have we have to the, in this episode, we have come to the conclusion that everyone should watch Mitchell's versus the machines, and then everyone should. Think seriously about whether they're whether they're going to watch the uh, the the lighthouse while they're sober. Yeah, well, is, well, is that the conclusion we've all it. drawn? Blanket recommendation for the lighthouse for me. Yeah, no, I loved it watching. I loved watching it sober too, but it was it it, it, it adds something extra when you are nearly as inebriated as the protagonist. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it had it had the elements. We've talked a lot about like Jim Jarmusch and David Lynch lately. If you like to just watch movies to just be like, "What the fuck did I just see?" You should definitely watch The Lighthouse. That and is don't absolutely... drink turpentine. I don't think it's that "what the fuck." I think the the like central metaphor is like very clear. Oh no! It's oh yeah, very, it's it's true. Yes. No, it yes. is. It, it's not that sort of "what the fuck did I just see?" We we yeah. know. Yes, they're yeah. they're they're two men going crazy inside of a giant penis. We got that. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, the no. it's the. Yeah. Oh, and now he suddenly sprouted tentacles. Oh, that's right. This probably isn't real. Yeah, They're yeah. trapped. They're trapped inside masculinity. The birds are a metaphor for feelings. The White House is a penis. That's why everything's covered in jizz. Yeah. <laughs> May a good protein point. fate befall ye boy. A protein fate. I, so which is hilarious because they immediately start fist fighting. This is not a subtle metaphor. <laughs> no, well, it's I mean, so good. I, I I do like the fact that we watched you know one movie that 
is probably going to be universally universally beloved by all audience members. And then another movie who you have to think about, is this something I need to, that I can recommend to this person or are they never going to speak to me again? Like, I mean, <laughs> like, 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 what, like, like one, um, what, like, for example, I absolutely adore the original uh, movie Old Boy. There are maybe mm, five people. Uh, there, there are maybe same, six, but yeah. there, there are may, there are maybe like six people I know who ha, who probably haven't seen it yet who I could maybe recommend, but I would have to think about it long and hard before you know I said that because there, there's but, but you, that reveal there's going to be that reveal and yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, Aaron it, again, this is another one like Old Boy is another one of those things where it's just like have you read or seen Oedipus Rex because yeah. it's the same story, yeah. it's the same story just with a crazy Korean dude. YouTube has been really preparing people for old boy a lot. (laughs) God, let's, oh my God, I'm sure there's a lot to be learned from that trip, but that's beyond our scope of this podcast. (laughs) Thank you guys. That's it for season four, episode 25 of the Gateway Geeks podcast, The Lighthouse is a Metaphor. Thanks for listening, and don't forget, we're now on Spotify as well as Apple Podcasts. This episode was with Sarah Jane Connor, Chris Knetzer, Joe Colburn, Aaron Robb, and Wendy Robb. It was edited by Joe Colburn and produced by Chris Knetzer and Joe.